Hello everybody, in this video I will react to some reddit posts on the Robinhood subreddit. Let's get started. So the first one is this one, and the title says $1000 to invest into long term stocks. Hello everyone, I am sort of new to investing but not a stranger to it as I was active in the markets during the pandemic. I have been given $1000 to invest and I decided to just throw it into the following. You guys let me know if it's a good idea or not. Alright, let's see what he's got. So we got GameStop, NVIDIA after stock split. This doesn't really matter that much unless you're doing covered calls. Kava, AMD, TSM. Okay, so heavily into things like tech, AI plays, chips. Please feel free to throw your own advice and offer guidance towards my journey inside of the stock market these next few years. Cheers. Next few years? Okay. I mean, it's kind of contradictory because the title says long term stocks, but he ends it with only next few years. If it's long term, you're talking not just a few years, you're talking the next like couple of decades even so I don't think we should be looking at this from a mindset of you know journey only through the next few years it should be sort of like a lifelong journey right uh, we're talking like at least 30 40 years I'm not sure how old this person is but you know usually when we think long term I think of several decades worth all right anyways so tech things like this if we're talking long term in my opinion long term several decades i would say nvidia is good amd and tsm and then from there invest into things that are not related to tech and ai and chips things like you know realty income or other things in other sectors that don't directly relate to these just to diversify a little bit but just starting out i mean obviously this person is says they're sort of new to investing right so i get it when you're new to investing you don't have like a million dollars to diversify your portfolio and all these different things so yeah i get it so it's just starting out with just one thousand dollars it's good enough all right, and then from there, have a long-term mindset. Keep on adding to your portfolio. I believe I made another video explaining what's the rule of thumb for how much you should be depositing into your portfolio. And then diversify a little bit into things that are not all in the same sector, and you should be good. Let's look at this next one. This post says, help what does this mean i wanted to buy an apple contract but this popped up i've had trouble with apple before wtf is happening and this picture right here it says not enough shares you don't have enough shares of apple for the collateral needed to place this order now the post says buying an apple contract but to be honest this looks like something that would pop up when you don't have enough shares for something like a covered call. When you're actually selling a contract rather than buying. Because buying, usually you don't need collateral to buy an Apple contract. But for covered calls, you need at least 100 shares. So if you don't have 100 shares, then you're not going to have enough collateral to do the covered call. So I think this person tried to do a covered call and then did not have 100 shares of app. And that's why this message popped up because they didn't have 100 shares of Apple for the collateral for the covered calls. All right, let's look at this one. This says Robin Hood margin for a house. Does anyone know if I take out margin loan can I move all of that money out to make a big purchase like a house on Robinhood? 
I heard that other brokerages can allow you to do so, but not sure what the terms are like on Robinhood. The interest rates seem better than mortgage, and it seems like I can pay the margin down at any point. So it looks very favorable as long as my portfolio amount is more than a margin amount, which could be risky if stock prices fall. First of all, if you have enough to take out Robinhood margin for a house, I mean, what are, that's okay. To put things into perspective, a house around where I live in California, like a regular two bedroom house could cost like a million dollars, right? So just a normal regular house, that's a million dollars. So if this person has like a million dollars in their account, honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this because it's super risky and that's a lot of money. Uh, that's a lot of money to put on margin for a house. And it's kind of confusing that someone like this would ask this type type of question because if you have a million dollars, you can just, I don't know, have enough money to pay for the mortgage just by getting like 10% return a year. This person could, could sell like cash secured puts, get like 10% a year, that's a hundred thousand dollars and then use that money to pay for the mortgage. I don't know. There's a lot of different options or what they could also do is use the money to buy the house outright and then do it the opposite way where they take out some sort of loan with the house as collateral and then use that money to buy stocks and then use the stocks as collateral. Oh, it could, it could go on and on. It could like, <laughs> oh, but that's super like over leveraged if, if they would do that. Now, I, I think that's a lot of leverage to take out for a, a whole house. That's like a million dollars at least, at least around where I live. I would not recommend this because if the stock market crashes, your portfolio can go down to like pretty much like 10% of what it was. I've heard horror stories of people in the, in my comments and on other YouTube videos, they went from like 70 K down to like 17 K right there. There have been videos like that talking about how they had a lot of money, then they used margin. They got overconfident and then they lost it all. So that's super risky. Plus you could lose your house. Then what are you going to do? Then you'll have no money because you got margin called and now you don't have a house either. It's just a super risky position to be in. Now, me personally, I do margin as well, but I do covered calls to sort of uh, cushion it a little bit, like, you know, not make it as risky. By the way, risky in terms of like losing money in general, not risky in terms of getting assigned. Cause I know some people like to comment that, but uh, whenever I talk about risk, even when it comes to covered calls, I'm talking about risk of losing money. All right, here's the next post. Robin hood says I bought Tesla at a significantly higher price than it's ever been. I was looking through some of my buys just because today, and I noticed Robin hood says I bought Tesla at $974 and 90 cents. However, the record high price of Tesla ever, was just over $400. It also shows I sold at $860 a few months later. Is Robinhood just reporting something wrong or what's going on? Any help ideas is appreciated. And then there's this picture, Tesla market sell, $176.55. And yeah, the share price does show at $860.59. However, there's a very important detail here that the poster probably did not pay attention to, and that is the number of shares. As you can see, it says 0.205149 shares. So we're not talking about whole numbers. We're not even talking about one share of Tesla. We're talking about 0.2 shares of Tesla, which is significantly 
less than one whole share. Now, $860, this is the price of one whole share, probably. However, he's not buying and selling one whole share. He's buying and selling only a fraction of it. So only 0.2 shares rather than one. And that is possible on Robinhood. Robinhood does allow partial shares. So you can do things like 0.1 shares or 0.2 shares, 0.3 shares, right? You can trade parts of a share rather than the whole thing. Um, for example, in my portfolio, I have like partial shares of Amazon. So let me show you guys. I have a position in Amazon. And as you can see down here, the number of shares, let me zoom in so you guys can see better. If we look at the number of shares, 300.038679. So it's not completely 300 shares as a full number. I do have a partial share. I have 300 shares and then I also have 0.038679 of an Amazon share. So it is possible to buy partial shares of stocks on Amazon instead of whole numbers like 300, 200, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can buy, you know, 0 0.03, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, things like that. That's possible on Amazon. So that's why the number showed a different amount than what he actually sold it at. So he sold it for like a hundred something dollars, even though the full share price of one whole share was like over $800. So that's why, because of partial shares. Let's look at the next question. Super new and wanting to learn about this stuff. Okay. So I've been on Robinhood now a month. This is how I am doing so far. I reinvested everything. I was buying and selling like as much as possible, taking every win and cutting some loss. I've put in $30. I need advice on next moves. Keep doing under a dollar stuff. I did spend 48 on Rivian, but don't mind selling it soon if I need to. Advice is welcome. Okay. There is a comment here that just says buy VOO and then stop looking at the app, which is it's partially good advice that I would agree with. Now, the thing is something like VOO is known to have about a 10% return per year on average, somewhere around there, 9%, 10%. However, if you only have $74 in your account at a 10% rate a year, even throughout several decades, that's not going to change into life-changing money. It's not going to be enough to buy a house, things like that. In my opinion, if your account is only $74, I'm not sure what this person's, you know, exact situation is. However, in my opinion, if I only had $74 in my account, I wouldn't even focus on inside this actual app. You know what I would do? I would find ways to make more money. And that could be doing Grubhub, Uber Eats, Amazon Flex, doing extra jobs and gig work in order to build up my account value. And then from there, as you build up your account value as a base, then from there, all of your percentage gains, they're going to have a bigger effect on the overall amount, right? Because 10% of $100, that's only $10. 10% of $1,000 is $100. 10% of $100,000, that's $10,000. So the bigger your account value is, given the same percentage gain, the bigger effect and bigger impact it'll have on your life if you have a bigger account value as a base. So... I do think that in this situation, the focus shouldn't even be within the app at all. Take a look outside of the app and ways to make money so you can add to your account. And not a lot of YouTubers will tell you this. They'll focus 
purely on stocks. They'll focus purely within the app and have tunnel vision on investing in stocks. Listen, let's get real here. $74 is just simply not enough to make like a huge life-saving amount of money. Even if you actually, this is a good example. This screenshot is a good example. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. Oh, whoops. I can't zoom in anymore. It's just stuck like that. Oh, here we go. Okay. So you see this up $148.88 in the past month. That is a huge percentage gain in the past month. Huge percentage gain. However, look how much money was actually made. $44. Now, $44. You can make more than this in one single day from doing gig work like DoorDash. Like that this is like maybe 3 trips. Maybe two in some areas. And you can make more than this in a day. Now, this is the past month. And even in one day of doing gig work, you can surpass this monthly, this crazy high percentage gain monthly gain. You can surpass the actual money amount in a single day from doing gig work. Or in some cases, by working several hours of overtime at your job or reselling or some way of making a little bit more money, right? In this situation, realistically, 148% in one month, that's not something that could be sustainable for the long term. This is not something that could be replicated over and over again every month, right? You cannot expect to make 148% gains every single month. However, what's more likely is that you can make five DoorDash trips, right, in a month. That's a little more sustainable uh, depending on where you live. I know the demand has gone down by a lot. I've been in those Reddits too for those gig work uh, apps. The general consensus is that the demand has gone down. But even then, that's just one example. Of course, there's got to be some way for you to make money outside of the app. And again, not a lot of YouTubers will point this out. They'll think, oh yeah, invest in this, invest in that. Realistically, in this situation, forget about investing. Focus on making the money first. Honestly, the investing part should come after you've actually built up a significant amount of capital. A significant of amount of money that you made, you know, somehow through actively working for it. And then you deposit that into your account. And then from there, your percentage gains will matter much more. Imagine if this was not only $74, if it was something even bigger as your account value. 148% in one month? Now that could be life-changing money if your portfolio value was big enough to begin with. But even with a 148% gain, which is insane for a monthly gain in terms of percentage wise, because the portfolio value is so low to begin with, this insane percentage gain, what is $44 going to do? What is $44? That's not even, that's like maybe a week's worth of groceries if you want to be really, really Rugal, right? It, it's not much. Even though the percentage gain is insane, the actual amount of money is not much. So this is why I say it's not enough to just focus purely on investing. You have to be realistic here. In order for those percentage gains to really matter, your nominal amount that you have inside your portfolio, it has to be big enough for those percentage gains to matter. And that's some uh, cold hard truth for a lot of people out there. I know a lot of people want me to say, oh yeah, you could just start with $10 and turn that into a million dollars. Listen, that's what a lot of scammers and fake gurus say, all right? That they make it seem like anyone with like $5 in their account could become a millionaire uh, just from that. 
I'm being realistic with you guys, all right? Realistically, if you only have a few dollars in your account, it's going to be very, very difficult to make yourself gain millions of dollars purely from investing alone inside the app. For most people, realistically, you actually have to look outside the app for ways to make more money and then, you know, take that money and put it inside your account and then your percentage gains will actually be more impactful on your life. I guarantee you not many YouTubers will say this. Anyways, I think that's pretty much it for this video. That's all I wanted to say. Just go over a couple of questions on the Robin Hood subreddit. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I hope you guys learned something from this. I'll be making more videos like this in the future. So please like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.